Hey, Brian, just um, can you maybe explain the last week what you were trying to do and, and what led you to that, to, to take the approach you did concerning the, how the team had, had been playing, I guess? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, I think we had to make some tough decisions, you know, probably a little sooner than we would have liked to make them, but um, we had to make them when we made them. You know, we had some good guys, some good players that, you know, we didn't really want to part with, but we ended up parting with because of, you know, it was, I don't know that we were showing the consistency that we needed to show to, you know, become a team that we're going to go for, it. you know, I, so I think we had to straddle a line of, of, you know, what's best for the future, what's best for our team in the future and, you know, try and still add players and stay competitive. Was this not necessarily a rebuild, but kind of just hoping to try to restock and, and get back right back in it next year? Yeah, I think we want to be competitive next year. I still think we want to be competitive this year. I, I still think we, you know, we got a pretty good team. Um, you know, we're going through some injuries. Our back end is, you know, decimated a little bit. You know, we've tried to add a, a good young defenseman in Sandine. Um, so we'll see where we are when we come out of it here. All right, we'll go to Tarek Obashir with The Athletic. Um, I wanted to ask you in in uh, specifically about uh, TVR and and Sherry uh, guys who are on expiring contract and didn't move today. Um, what 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 was going on there? I mean, we like them. They have a good role on our team. Um, you know, we fielded a couple offers. I think there was a trade off between you know we like the players. You know, we have some interest in bringing them back and you know, what the return is. So if something really made sense and we would have pursued it, but we'd rather have the guys on our team and the chance to bring them back going forward, then the return was what we were being offered for. And if I could follow up um, with regard to maybe trying to get some, some bigger pieces here at the deadline, um, do you feel like maybe they're going to be better prices um, in the off season and that there's going to be more building to happen here uh, in July? Uh, I mean, that's tough to determine. Um, I mean, I think the good thing, our strategy was to try and get some assets or draft picks that we could use going forward, you know, to acquire players or to get in a discussion of players that we like. I mean, you know, we try and get in, you know, the players that we have interest in, you still need some players and draft picks to trade to get these guys. So it's, I think we increased our ability to, to do that. And, you know, going into the draft, we can, we have a chance to make it happen. If I could follow up one more time, so I don't forget um, a little bit more on Rasmus uh, Sandin. Um, yes. What, what did you like about his game and where do you kind of hope he slots in next year? Yeah, I mean, we like his age. We like his game. I mean, he's a puck-moving, skilled defenseman. He's a competitive guy. Um, you know, real good five-on-five -five player so far. Um, can add a little bit to the power play. Um, and there's upside here. You know, I think he's played mostly third pair in Toronto. I mean, he's going to get an opportunity with us to play higher in the lineup. And uh, I think he's excited about it, and I think he can take advantage of it. And there's only room to grow for him i mean he's 20 22 23 years old and he's only going to get better going forward so we see you know hopefully a guy that we can build around moving forward a young you know top four defenseman that uh, will play here a long time hopefully thank you steven wino ap Hey, Brian, now you made most of your, all your deals before deadline day, uh, and, and most of the league did. I'm wondering what you made of kind of why so much of the activity was early this year. Yeah, I don't know what the reasoning was. I mean, it feels like it's been going on for three weeks um, with today really quiet. You know, most of it, uh, most of the hard work has been done earlier. Uh, I'm not sure the reasoning behind it, but uh, it felt like conversations were more serious a couple of weeks out than they normally are. And I mean, you got to, that's the way it was working. So you got to participate in it. And with the, uh, you got a first round pick in the Boston deal, obviously then flipped the first round pick for, for Sandine. Were first round picks more in the conversation this year? It seems like teams were more willing to kind of talk about those first round picks, at least the later first round picks. Yeah. Well, it's the contending teams that were, uh, look like, uh, 
you know, a big arms race going on and they were using first round picks to accomplish what they wanted to accomplish. I think the East, especially the Eastern teams were willing to do what they needed to do to fortify their lineups uh, to get into the playoffs. And those were the teams that were trading their first round picks. <clears throat> Roman Stubbs, Washington Post. Brian, I was just curious what this process was like for you and with how busy it got and just, you know, kind of making all of these deals, maybe more deals than you have um, in your time here. Just what was that like for you personally and professionally the last week or so, just trying to 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 maneuver all these these uh, moving parts? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. It's, uh, you know, it's hard. I mean, we've you know, since I've been here, we've always gone for it. You're always adding, looking for ways to, to you know, improve your team or add on the fringes or try and make an impactful trade. I mean, it was unusual this year and that we went the other way. And, you know, we have guys that we've been with for a long, long time, you know, uh, and that have been good players, good people, good players. We've had success with them. Um, to have to move on from them is difficult. It's difficult for our players. It's difficult for us. Thanks. Matt, Matt Weirich, NBC Sports Washington. Hey, Brian. As you said, trading players at the deadline is not a position that you really wanted to be in. But considering now with the couple of years that you do have left on Ovechkin, Baxter contracts, how much do these moves, just looking at it from a broader sense, give you a, a greater ability to build a contending team and compete for Stanley Cups while those guys are still under contract? Yeah, I mean, like like we spoke earlier, I mean, we have, uh, you know, we have some draft capital that we can use going forward. You know, we've acquired some picks, um, you know, and I think next year, next year's first round pick is going to be a good pick. We should get a good player there. Um, and then moving forward into uh, the offseason, into the draft, uh, you know, we have, you know, a lot more flexibility to trade for players. And one other, just with, with Martin Faravari being a restricted free agent coming up, you obviously bring in Sandine as well. Um, but how much interest do you have there in extending Faravari past the season? Yeah, I mean, a lot. I mean, we really like what he's done. He's, he's a big part of our organization going forward. Um, you know, I think it's we got two young guys, Sandine and him, uh, that we hopefully we can build around. I mean, uh, going forward, I mean, we're, we're going to have two young top four defenseman that uh that'll be a big part of our team uh for a lot of years to come go to scott scott abraham abc7 hey brian thanks for doing this i think from a fan perspective it's a bit unnerving because they're not used to the capitals trading away players at the trade deadline i guess what's your message to the fans to maybe calm their nerves or uh, maybe sense of confusion at, at, with the direction of this franchise right now. Uh, uh, hopefully, it's not confusing. I still think we have uh, we have an or older core that we're we're you know are still going to move forward with. We, you know, we could make some changes in that, but uh, you know, our goal is to add some younger players. Um, you know, we did that with Sandine, Marty Ferry, Arby's coming. We'll see where Alexiev is here down the stretch. We called up by Oreo. Uh, we added Milano. Uh, we added Strom. Uh, I think we're adding a lot of good pieces that can we can continue to be competitive. Um, and you complement them with Wilson. You complement them with uh, you know Kuzi with Ovi, um, Oshi. I think it's still a competitive team. Uh, I don't look at it as we're taking a huge step back. I think we might be even taking a step forward. During this process, did you kind of meet with some of the senior leaders on the team, maybe specifically Alex Ovechkin, to kind of get his thoughts and explain, you know, the direction uh, of this franchise right now? Yeah, I, I think, you know, I always meet with, uh, you know, uh, some of the older guys. I met with Obi just to tell him, you know, what I thought would happen down the stretch here and um, just so he's getting a heads up on and the reasons why, why it was going to happen and what we hope to accomplish through the trade deadline. We'll go to Ben Raby, Caps Radio. Hey, Brian, just wanted to ask you how John Carlson is doing and maybe if you could describe a little bit the impact, you know, since December 23rd on, you know, where his absence, how much it's it's been felt. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, you know, are your number one D that plays 22, 23 minutes a night, um, you know, out of our lineup since the end of December. I thought we had a really good December uh, where we outplayed teams and, and played really well, had a really good record. And then, you know, John went down and that's when I think our inconsistency started. I mean, it's, and it's hard to replace a guy like him um, while we bumped guys up into the lineups, increase their minutes, um, which most of them handled well, but it's still not the same as having uh, John in there playing both power play and penalty killing. So I, I do think it had a big effect on uh, the results, you know, from the end of December on um, contributed to our, what I would call inconsistencies. Um, you know, there's games where we played really well against real good, good teams. And then there was games that, you know, we didn't play well against lower tiered teams that we probably should have. And, uh, you know, having Carly in there, I think, I think would have had a big impact on our lineup. How's he doing? He's got uh, a little bit left. He's got a set time frame here. So, you know, near the end of March in that time frame um, is when, you know, we can get serious about seeing if he can come back. Could the team standing Brian impact whether he comes back or not, or it would just be just just on him and how he's progressing? No, I think it's going to be on him and how he's progressing, how he feels, and we'll kind of make a decision with him and his uh, and our staff, the medical staff and trainers. Just one more one more follow up on that. Is it? I mean, you take a number one defenseman like him out of any lineup, the impact is going to be felt. Is it? I don't know if surprising is the appropriate word, but to the extent that he was missed, I mean, it was to, to you, as you described, it was pretty, pretty significant. Um, is it, is it surprising to the, the, the extent maybe that, that, that impact was really felt these past few months? Yeah, no, I don't think so. I mean, it's, you know, you take, uh, there's uh, impact players that, carry your team you know you have a core group of these guys the Ovechkins and Carlson's when they're out of the lineup it's noticeable you know I, I know when we had Ovi out of the lineup there for four or five games it was there's a big presence gone in our lineup uh, and the same happens with Carlson I mean he, he's a big part of our team and and does a lot of things for us and and you really miss him when he's out there's just not people that can fill in and do what he does Okay, we'll go to Alex Flum with DC News Now. Hey, Brian, you touched on this a tiny bit, but, you know, parting ways with guys that have brought so much success to the team, specifically Dmitry Orlov and Lars Zeller, was it, I don't, just curious if you've had experiences like that in your career where it's, you know, just a tough trade away like that and, and what the conversations with those two guys were like specifically. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough conversation because, you know, we've been together, we've had success for a long time here with both of those guys. And uh, they've been a big part, uh, you know, of the organization. Um, you know, I think Lars coming in was was a huge impact on our team, you know, solidifying that third line center and a big reason we won the cup. Um, you know, Orly has always been a great player for us. I think, you know, even in our own market, I think he's underrated how good he is and how good he's been. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's hard to lose good people, people we've had success with and that are really good players. It's, it's tough to move on from them. Thank you. Yep. Go back to Tarek Obashir. Hey, Mac, I wanted to follow up on a couple of transactions, um, um, here over the last 48 hours. Let's start with, uh, Ethan Frank, what, why did you sign him? And, and can he play this year? Is there a possibility for, for you? Well, next year. He can't yeah, I mean, he's had a really good year, you know. Um, you know, we signed him as a college free agent, um, looking to see how we could develop him or how he would play in the American League. Obviously had a great year, scoring goals, an all-star, um, you know. So I think it was a no-brainer to sign him to an NHL deal and then go from there for next year. You know, we'll see how he is in training camp and, you know, make decisions based on that. Um, Abe Kubel, um, bringing him back. What, what, what have you liked about him since he's kind of become a... Yeah, I think we like, you know, I think it's been, a, you know, he's been in and out of the lineup a little bit. I think it's been tough to get a rhythm for himself. But when he's been in, I think uh, we like the speed. We like the energy. 
uh, the physicality he brings. Uh, I think once he's in there consistently with a consistent line, um, he's going to feel more comfortable and add more to our lineup. And finally, Nick Jensen, um, the, the three-year extension there. Um, did he come in money-wise money about where you thought? And he's going to be 33. Yeah, I mean, I think Nick's, yeah, Nick's had a great year. Um, I think we're comfortable with his age um, and that term. He he's, he's works out hard. He's in good shape. Um, he does a lot of good things. I mean, I, I think it would have been hard for us to replace what Nick does in our lineup. Um, you know, a guy that starts in his own end, he's a first penalty kill guy. Um, very valuable that way. He plays against good players. The skating, I think, is going to stay the same form over the next three years. So um, we wouldn't have been able to replace that outside of our team. So we thought it was important to bring him back. Thanks, Mac. Right, last question goes to Tom Galetti, Angel.com. Brian, uh, can you update us on the two defensemen that were hurt uh, the other night, Jensen and Ferrari? Is that are those things that are serious? Is Jensen out for a while? Or no, I, I think the word I didn't follow up as busy today, Tom, but I think they're a little more positive than we originally thought. Um, so I, I'll get more information uh, tomorrow, but it wasn't as bad as we initially thought for Jensen, and then Marty um, was always just a shorter term injury. And the two guys you brought up today, uh, the intention for them to play then, just because? Yes. Well, yeah, they'll be in a lineup. 